Ciao. Like a penguin. Now, I didn't mean what was on the TV set. I meant what program? Oh, well. For almost a year, and I just found out last week <laughs> how my tools were messing me up. Chuck Joyner is here with us, everybody. Chuck Joyner, uh, you know Chuck from uh, Mac Voices and uh, also Mac Voices. And from seeing him on the floor at different uh, shows and being on this show, of course, and I'm uh, certainly glad to have Chuck back. Uh, anything else we want to tell people about before we dive in, Chuck? No, I think that's that's it, Ken. I mean, unfortunately, you're not seeing me or anybody else on any shows because right now we're not having any shows. But hopefully yeah. at one point, it'll be back. That would be fun. Yeah. And also, we should let people know uh, Chuck Joyner on Twitter, right? Yes. Just Chuck Joyner. There you go. J-O-I-N-E-R. Chuck Joyner on Twitter. And now let us, uh, well, I was going to say let us play our game, but we don't do that till Friday. So let's just talk instead. On Monday, a lot of times I don't know what we're talking about because I asked the guest for the week uh, to bring a story of their own. It is news to whomever happens to be on, uh, where, of course, whoever happens to be on equals the name. For example, I would say today it's news to Chuck, and Chuck would say what's news to him is... Streaming video entertainment. Streaming video entertainment. Hey, I sound like yes. uh, I'm like Ed McMahon <laughs> over here. <laughs> Well, Ken, you're part of the uh, you're part of the cause of this. That and the announcement uh, late last week, I believe it was, of Discovery Plus, a yet another new streaming service. <laughs> okay, I forgot about that <laughs> and, one. Yeah, well, it's it, it got me to really thinking, you know, about the way we all used to say, "Gee, we wish we could just have a la carte." Mm -hmm. And even though they're trying to tell us we have a la carte, we really don't because they still want to tap us in for, well, we've got, you know, these, these 2,500 shows or whatever. And so, so then that sort of crossed the streams over to the announcement about Warner uh, releasing their movies in theaters and streaming at the same time. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I start with the movie thing first. I, I, I'm not ready to say that the movie industry is getting what they deserve because that's really not not fair, and I don't feel that way. But at the same time, um, it started to remind me of another industry that refused to evolve or change and didn't take good care of its customers, and somebody came along and ate its lunch, and that is the taxi industry. Hmm. All of a sudden, you know, the the, the ride hailing services came along, and boom, and people preferred those. And so now we have a situation where for a number of years, home entertainment and home theater has been getting better and less expensive and easier to set up. And yet the movie theaters, for the most part, and I, I know there's some exceptions out there, were not – they were not really trying to improve their situation, their their experience. And now we have the, the crush of the pandemic on them. And the, the the studio, in this case Warner, is deciding that, yeah, okay, we're going to continue to support you over here, but our customers are saying they really want this over here. And I'm not convinced it's just because of the pandemic. I think that there's more of a demand for things when people want them, where they want them, how they want them. And so, you know, it's it's an interesting mix. Look at the you look at the TV uh, situation, and the broadcast TV has not been really doing what people wanted. Mm -hmm. um, the cable networks have not been doing what people were at begging for, and so the streaming services came along. And guess what? Now, they're the, the the cable services are struggling, trying to figure this out. Meanwhile, we're all getting you know pecked to death by ducks with all these little subscription charges. And, you know, I, d I don't know what the answer is. I'm not smart enough except to say that I would love to be able to pay, you know, a few bucks, something that I would consider affordable for a season of a show. Not a network, not a collection of stuff, just a show. And let the value propositions evolve from there. <sighs> Golly, there's just a ton of stuff there. Um, <laughs> I guess I want to start with the one thing that the movie theaters did do was put in heated recliners. I don't know if you've ever had the pleasure of going to a movie theater that has a heated recliner in it, but that is actually kind of nice. It's kind of nice and it's kind of fun. Um, yeah, the rest of it, though, I kind of agree with you. Uh, concessions cost way too much. Uh, you, uh, I think you were probably there for the live show that I did where I just kind of you know ranted about the theater going experience and how sort of terrible it's gotten. Because, well, but I mean, that's... See, that goes further and further back. You can say, well, the theaters kind of stink. 
personally, I think a lot of that has to do with the people that work at the theater, but that goes back to management and not paying enough because, you know, it's a throwaway job as far as they're concerned. If they can get a robot to do what they would, then they wouldn't even bother spe- uh, paying somebody the seven fifty an hour or whatever they're paying to do that, whatever minimum wage happens to be someplace. Then I go completely the other way, and like what you're talking about, as far as I would just want to pay for this and you know pay five bucks for that series or pay you know twenty five bucks for that series and call it good. We sort of lose discoverability at that point, but I think I've lost discoverability anyway because there's no flipping channels anymore. Because there are no channels anymore. There are just direct channels in a way. I don't know. And you you bring up an interesting point that I didn't think about, but I'm kind of with you that anything that I watch now, mm-hmm. I usually am told about by a friend or I see an article about somewhere online. I don't get it from the uh, – the, the main main broadcast TV I watch is the morning news mm-hmm. as, I, as I get ready for work. So um, – you know, I, it's not like any of the the advertisements there affect me because I, I seldom see a new show that I'm interested in on that particular network on broadcast TV. So the rest of the discoverability thing is, you know, is coming from completely different sources. I don't know anything about uh, the way Netflix suggests things to people. Like, are they suggesting the same stuff to everybody as soon as they turn it on? Or is that algorithmically um, generated? Because I will say Netflix, for me, has been crushing it over the past couple of weeks with suggesting new stuff. I haven't gotten to all of it, but it was because I logged into Netflix and it said, hey, you should watch The Trial of the Chicago 7. And I was like, my golly, I should, because look at that cast and look at that you know topic and all that stuff. I uh, logged in Friday, I think it was, and it started telling me about Mank. Uh, do you know about this movie? Mank? No, this Mank. is new. Uh, it's about uh, Mankiewicz, uh, Henry Mankiewicz, I believe. I can't remember if it's Henry. I think it is. Uh, the guy who wrote the script for Citizen Kane um, and his dealings with his own alcoholism and his inability to write and the pressures coming from uh, William Randolph Hearst not to even do it and the pressure's coming from Orson Welles to finish it uh, stars Gary Oldman uh, directed by David Fincher who of course did uh, Fight Club and Panic Room and a bunch of other things I can't think of off the top of my head um, and yeah I, I mean the only reason I haven't watched that movie yet is because I already had a bunch of other stuff planned to watch this weekend that was more holiday related it, all of which is to say, I mean, like like Apple is pushing, you know, the stuff that Apple is pushing, but Apple is producing relatively little content at this point. A lot more, I think, than a lot of us expected, but they're producing relatively little content at this point. So if they come out with something, that is the thing that they're going to push to you because they really don't have much else new to push to you right now. Netflix, on the other hand, is doing, you know, like so much for a while. I felt like I don't know how it is I'm supposed to find the good stuff. And either they're just getting behind some of their biggest properties and pushing that to everybody, or they have finally figured out how to tell me what it is that they're producing that I want to see. Even there, though, that's only that's only uh, discoverability, uh, forgive me for using that term, if you happen to be logging on to something that already has a lot of stuff, like if Discovery comes out with a, you know, with a, with a $5 a month plan, I mean, all I'm discovering there is Discovery. I'm not discovering like a big you know, sort of wider, um, wider array of content. One other thing I'd, I'd love to know what other people do, because I know it's not necessarily me, mm-hmm. is looking for brand new content. I, I have the impression that, I'm, think about Peacock, think about, again, Discovery Plus, mm-hmm. um, think about so many things. It's not the new content, se- content excuse me, that seems to be drawing people. It's, it's the library of content that is being offered. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, I, again, I, I have to wonder about just what role discoverability plays and in, in getting someone to a service, but more importantly, to keeping them there. I'm not sure it's the discoverability. I think it might be the, the library. Hmm. That's really interesting and also kind of depressing. I'm watching The West Wing right now. That's like one of the things. The reason I didn't have time to watch Mank is because I'm watching... On the weekends, we watch, uh, on Friday night and Saturday night, watch usually a couple of episodes of West Wing. And then we might watch something else as well, depending on what we have planned. As I say, this week was a lot of holiday stuff. I didn't even think about the hour and 45 minutes that I spent watching the West Wing, because that's just sort of built in right now. Um, That legacy content, if you will, which is funny, because that's one of the things that people said, well, Apple needs that if they're going to succeed. 
then part of me wants to say no because they can go out and they can find new filmmakers and new ideas and new stories and oh oh wait it's time for me to watch that show that ended 10 years ago i mean legacy content is or 12 years ago now legacy content is the thing that's going to draw people in i think i don't know if that's because part of me wants to know is that because of the pandemic and then i realized no because nick at night was a thing forever and nick at night was you know we show reruns of shows you've already seen a million times right there's like a whole like day part devoted to here's your comfort food here's the thing that you know it's never going to offend you it's never going to surprise you it's never going to be anything different than what it was and uh, isn't that what you want anyway and i know we have a couple of those um networks here me tv Mm -hmm. is is big here um i think it's there's one antenna tv there are a couple others that you're i mean you're right they just they show stuff that you've seen a million times and so it can be like going and getting a bag of potato chips it's just sort of comfortable if you have nothing else to do now i'm not i can't identify with that but i know a lot of people that love you know that idea that they will go back and they will watch Perry Mason. I mean, the, the, the original version of Perry Mason on a daily basis and just love it. 